Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I want to show you how I'm repairing cracks in my mud rocket stove. Stay tuned. Welcome back, subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the Green Shorts icon that's going to appear in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen throughout the video. When you're working with clay and sand, cracks are going to be inevitable. It's part of the drying process. As the stove shrinks down with co combination of heat and just as the air dries it, pulls the moisture out, it's going to shrink. And if that shrinking happens at all unevenly, that's how we're going to get cracks. The way I built this stove may have also contributed to some of those cracks, just because the armature was kind of difficult to work around as I was pushing the clay in, I'm not sure I was able to get it all the way down and fully mixed together in certain areas. So. I saw that in the holes I dealt with on the inside and outside when we unformed this, but I'm also seeing it now as drying is occurring unevenly. So the good news is most of the cracks are pretty small and they don't seem to be that deep either. I think the armature is working to stop the cracks from moving all the way through the walls of the stove. However, I do want to patch them just to help it look more aesthetic, but also to prevent them from getting larger. Some of the bigger cracks are here on the back, but you can see here, even on the top, that crack isn't going more than half an inch into the side. And I'm happy about that, because that means this isn't much more than just a surface crack. Also got a hole here to deal with. Now that the paper's dry, it's peeling off pretty nicely. So I'm gonna remove the paper from around the cracks and any loose pieces inside. Just using a small stick to get at that loose chunk there. I'm thinking if I had let the cardboard dry out before I pulled it off the stove, then it would have brought this layer of paper with it. So that might be a good step to do as you unform your stove to let it dry on the outside before you pull the cardboard off. So some of these cracks are here, like these bigger holes here, are as a result of the compacting process not going as well as I thought. So as I'm removing the paper using the small stick, I'm finding a lot more flaws that I hadn't seen before. Now that we got 90% of the paper off, we're going to start patching these holes. Here we are about a month after I made this cob and it's still pretty pliable. But being a little more sticky like this is going to be perfect for patching. This particular cavity is pretty deep. I could actually see all the way into the armature. So I want to make sure as I put this in to really push it down to fill that cavity up. I see any larger pieces of gravel in here. I'm knocking them out. I use the same method for the cracks, but working with smaller amounts of cob so I can pull out the pieces of gravel. All right, so I got all the holes and cracks patched. I even took the time to do a few cracks that I found in the chimney. I had a comment on one of the videos about this stove 
from a viewer from Iraq. And he talked about how his people have used this building material for hundreds and thousands of years. He also recommended not using the armature and instead using hay, which I was concerned about because of the temperatures here. But I was recently on an assignment in Peru and I happened to do a video there about adobe and how it's made. And I saw these huge adobe furnaces. It's pretty amazing. That were running at super hot temperatures for long periods of time and they seem to be holding up pretty well. So what I'd like to do is make a second version of this stove with no armature and using hay, just like my friend from Iraq has suggested. And I'm hoping that will eliminate some of the problems we had with this stove. Although as you can see, it seems to be patching up quite nicely. I'm not gonna dry this with heat today. Rather, let the dry parts of the, of the stove absorb the moisture from the patched parts of the stove. And in doing so, that should actually increase the bonding between those two parts. But I also expect that there will be some ongoing maintenance with this stove as I use it and as the heat and cooling cycles start to form more cracks. But the beauty of it is that building with earth means I always have materials on hand if I need to make another one. Let me know in the comments below if you've made this rocket stove and if you've had any of the problems that I've found with mine. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks for watching, please like and share, and subscribe for new DIY videos every Friday.